good afternoon friends hope all of you are doing well we are uh, watching uh, presentations regarding covid and uh, covid 19 in pre uh, recently in many groups and uh, ma in many webinars so we are literally uh, going about covid covid and covid so i thought that we should get out of that covid and we should start uh, sharing something else so that uh, our psychological status remained okay uh, and uh, we can learn something new we can share something new uh, so today i th thought of uh, uh, present uh, this thing a uh, troubleshooting in upper limb blocks to all of you Actually, Shishir Agrawal uh, suggested me a few days back uh, that all the task members uh, like Raghavendra sir, uh, uh, Anastasia Monk, Anil Sharma, Vinit Gupta and other senior members can start doing this. There must be non-COVID presentation so that uh, everybody will enjoy it because there are many COVID related presentation all across. So. Today I start with uh, troubleshooting in upper limb blocks. Uh, I uh, basically I presented uh, this during a workshop at uh, Baroda, uh, and I, now I am presenting. It is mainly focused on uh, PNS guided block, and there will be something about uh, ultrasound guided blocks in the end. So when you are doing upper limb uh, blocks with PNS, uh, sometimes you find problems and common problems. I, are first is difficulty in identification of landmarks sometimes uh, when you uh, in pns guided blocks you need to palpate the landmarks and then accordingly you will insert your needle and look for the response so in some patients like in obese patient in patient with short neck or su uh, some surgery in the neck you uh, there will be some difficulty in identification of landmarks sometimes you go you don't get response despite trying. Sometimes you get the response, but the response is not a desired response. So what should you do? Sometimes you find blood on aspiration. In that case, you have to readjust the needle or sometimes you have to abandon the procedures if you found a big hematoma because of some arterial puncture. Parasitia or response below 0.3 milliampere uh, we should not inject or sometimes we find patchy blocks. So these are the common problems. So we will deal with it one by one. First is difficulty in identification of the landmark. Uh, suppose patient is for either supraclavicular block or interscalene block. In those patients, you need to palpate the sternocleidomastoid. But in certain, uh, if patient is thin and lean, you can easily palpate it. But in some patient, it is difficult to palpate uh, those muscle uh, uh, that is sternocleidomastoid. So you can ask the patient to elevate the head slightly to bring the clavicular head of the sternocleidomastoid muscle into prominence. So when you ask the patient to lift the head, it becomes prominent and you can easily palpate it. Sometimes after palpating the uh, sternocleidomastoid, you are searching for the interscalene groove when you, especially when you want to give an uh, interscalene block. So you ask the patient to sneeze to palpate the. So when patient sneezes, interscalene muscle become taut and you can easily palpate those muscle. So palpate the uh, lateral border of the uh, clavicular head of the sternocleidomastoid, go one to two centimeter posterior. Uh, if you cannot palpate this uh, interscalene groove, then ask the patient to sneeze and uh, it becomes taut and you can easily palpate the groove. Look for the EJV. EJV is a very prominent landmark which is just above the uh, uh, interscalene groove in the most patient. Interscalene groove either lies below it or sometimes anterior to it or posterior to it. So uh, look for the EJV, ask the patient to uh, you know, do valsalva man maneuver so that EJV get engorged and you can see the EJV and then you can search for the uh, interscalene groove surrounding EJV. To palp, uh, in a patient for, uh, uh, suppose patient is for uh, uh, infraclavical block where you need to palpate the corrocate patient. 
but sometimes in obese patient or in certain patient you cannot find the uh, corrected process so you have to palpate the medial head of the uh, humerus then go medially a bit and then ask the patient to abduct and adduct his hand when you ask the patient to abduct and adduct the hand you will find a uh, bony structure moving below your a palpating finger and that is your coracoid pr process so that is how you can palpate uh, the, uh, the coracoid process excess abduction is avoided in axillary block uh, when you ask to uh, in axillary block uh, usually we ask the patient to uh, abduct the uh, hand in certain situation when you ask uh, uh, when you do excessive abduction it is difficult to palpate uh, the uh, axillary artery in such situation you reduce the abduction, abduction uh, axilla uh, 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 which was tense will be become looser and it will be easier to palpate the axillary uh, artery and uh, in the <clears throat> When you ask for uh, excessive adduction, another problem is the uh, brachial plexus become will become taut, and in such cases, it is there are chances of no injury when you insert the needle. So don't do excessive abduction while doing axillary block. Uh, for vertical infraclavicular block, it is sometimes it, it it is between the uh, suprasternal notch and the uh, acromion pro process so sometimes it is difficult to palpate the acromion process so go from behind palpate the spinous process keep palpating the spinous process go, come anteriorly and you will find the uh, 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 process at certain level and you can draw the line and go in between that uh, at the middle point of the line for vertical infraclavicular block Next problem is uh, not getting proper response. When you are get, not getting any response with uh, PNS guided blocks, first thing you need to check is circuit, whether you have applied the lead and uh, knob on the lead or not, the circuit is completed. In most machine, there is a difference in the pitch of the sound when circuit is completed or circuit is incomplete. So you can easy, easily identify it. But uh, sometimes what happens, you are giving the block and your all concentration is on giving the block and you miss these things and you go, don't get any response. Check the current level. In certain machine, current level is uh, at the beginning is at zero. So you have to adjust to one to 1.5 according to your need. So you have to uh, check the current also. And at last, uh, if a machine is okay, circuit is complete, current is set, then check for the landmark. Sometimes you have palpated the wrong landmark and that's why you are not getting <clears throat> proper response because you are nowhere near the now or plexus. Next important and very important point, it is not getting desired response. We need to get proper desired response for successful block. If you don't get that response, don't inject the drugs. Otherwise, there are chances of failure of block or Apache block or an incomplete block. Interscalene block, desired response is either contraction of the pectoral muscles, biceps muscle, tricep muscle, deltoid muscles or forearm and head muscle yeah, i uh, usually uh, bi biceps triceps and deltoid muscle contraction is accepted response for the interscalene block but sometimes when you in initially insert the needle you, you will find the local twitches of the neck muscles in that case there it is because of direct stimulation of uh, either uh, interscalene muscle anterior scalene muscle or sternocleidomastic mus muscle your current level is high so sometimes you directly stimulate the muscle and uh, need your needle is either too anterior or too medial so in that case what is the action you withdraw the needle and reinsert the needle 15 degree posterior and there are all chances that you will get the desired response Second problem, there is no twitches and bone cutting. You insert the needle, you go deeper, and you are not getting any response, and you hit the bone. Uh, earlier, when we were we were giving blind blocks, we were used to give the block after hitting the T6 transverse process. But nowadays, with PNS and ultrasound guided blocks, it is not rec recommended. Usually, it is on transverse process. And in such case, needle is too posterior. You have gone too deeper 
So you have to withdraw the needle and reinsert the needle 15 degree anterior to find the desired response. Twitches of diaphragm. Here you can see this is the phrenic now lying very close to the interscalene area. And that's why uh, when you give the interscalene block, almost in all 100% of the patient, there will be some involvement of phrenic nerve. Uh, there are studies where they have injected just 7 to 8 ml of LA. And even in those cases, there, were, there was phrenic nerve palsy. And that is why bilateral uh, uh, interscalene block is not recommended because bilateral phrenic nerve palsy will lead to bilateral uh, uh, paralysis of diaphragm and patient will have respiratory stress. So if you get you, if you, when you are getting the twitches of diaphragm, it is because of stimulation of the phrenic nerve. Uh, when you find this, your needle is too anterior or too medial. So in this case, you have to withdraw the needle, reinsert the needle 15 degree posterior and lateral, and look for the desired response. Sometimes you stimulate the thoracodorsal nerve. It's, it causes twitches of the scapula or serratus anterior muscle. If you find the twitches in the scapula or serratus anterior muscle, it is not a desired response. It, it is because of stimulation of soracodorsal low. And in such cases, needle is too posterior and deep to the brachial plexus. You are going too deeper. That's why you are getting that response. In that case, we draw the needle and reinsert it anteriorly and superficially to find the usually you will get the interscalene block with uh, within uh, 2 to 2.5 centimeter even in the obese patient you will find it so don't go too deeper twitches of trapezius muscle sometimes it happens it is because of a stimulus of relation of the accessory now in such case again you are too deeper and posterior to the brachial plexus withdraw the needle and reinsert anteriorly so this is how you can um, uh, uh, look at the responses in the interscalene block and readjust the needle according to the type of response to get the desired response in supraclavicular block uh, uh, a desired response is the response of the hands or fingers Either it may be uh, uh, extension of the hands and fingers, or it will be flexion of the hands and fingers. But if you got the shoulder muscles twitch, uh, it is because of stimulation of the upper trunk. When you insert the needle and you are getting the twitches of the shoulder muscle, then it is because of stimulation of the upper trunk. But here you don't want to inject the drug. You you want usually you want to go for the lower trunk, which is lying closer to the uh, subclavian artery uh, where we in ultrasound guided block we tell it a uh, corner pocket injection so when you inject that drug will spread uh, upward also and it will block the entire plexus so you have to change the needle direction a little bit cordially and uh, advance the needle again another response is that which is of the triceps by biceps or pectoral muscle sometimes you find it uh, in such case you are stimulating the medial trunk but again, it is not a desired response. In such case, needle is on the way to the lower trunk. You are going towards the lower trunk. So you have to just advance the needle if you are getting this tricep, biceps, or pectoral muscle and look for the lower trunk response. Lower trunk response is the ideal response, desirable response. And uh, if you get it, um, you are safe. Uh, infraclavicular block, posterior cord response is desirable response either with VAB or with uh, lateral uh, or coracoid approach. Uh, if you get the posterior cord response, you inject the drug and drug will spread to the medial and lateral cord both. But if you inject with a medial cord response or lateral cord response, you will not get uh, the complete block. But sometimes you, uh, when you insert the needle, initially you got pectoral muscle stimulation. This is basically because of the stimulation of the uh, medial and lateral pectoral nerve. Uh, as we see in the uh, PEX1 block, lateral and medial pectoral nerves lies between the PEC major and PEC minor. So your needle is going through the PEC major and PEC minor, then you will near the artery and the plexus. So if you are getting the pectoral muscle stimulation, it is because of uh, uh, lateral and medial pectoral nerve stimulation, uh, your, your placement is too shallow, you are too superficial, and you have to advance the needle uh, to get the desired response. Subscapularis muscle stimulation, 
again it is because of two displacement of the needle then you have to withdraw the needle uh, and reinsert superior or inferior to get the desired response uh, sometimes you stimulate the axillary now in that case you will find the deltoid muscle stimulation so if you are getting deltoid muscle stimulation it is because of axillary now stimulation uh, and in such case needle is too inferior and you have to withdraw the needle and reinsert bit superiorly so that is how you can um, uh, find the proper response in the infraclavicular block uh, biceps muscle stimulation again that is because of musculocutus no some no stimulation it gets separated uh, in the infraclavicular area only uh, so uh, separate stimulation of the mus musculocutus now is not a desired response uh, because if you inject the drug, the remaining part will be uh, not blocked and you will not get the proper block. So needle, needle is too superior and you have to withdraw and reinsert the needle bit inferiorly. For axillary response, desired response is response of the finger and hand according to the now stimulated. Like if you are stimulating the radial now, it will extend the finger. If you are stimulating the ulnar now, it will uh, lead to flexion of the uh, medial fingers. And for median, it is uh, for lateral finger flexions. Uh, so you, if you are getting biceps muscle stimulation uh, with axillary block, it is too superficial, uh, superior placement of the needle. You need to go a bit inferiorly. If you are getting triceps muscle stimulation, again, to, uh, you are too inferior plus, uh, inferiorly placed and you have to go a bit super, uh, su uh, superiorly uh, to get the desired response. Needle touches the bone. Then... Uh, Obviously, you are too deep. It is a very superficial block, and you will get the response. Except radial, uh, medial, and ulnar nerves lie very superficial, so it is too deep placement of the needle, and you have to withdraw the needle and reinsert at the uh, less angle. So this is how you can uh, see the responses for the in interscalene, uh, supraclavicular, infraclavicular, and axillary block, and according to to the muscle response uh, you can understand where your needle tip is lying and you can readjust the needle to get the desired response next is blood on aspiration obviously when you find blood on aspiration you have to withdraw the needle and uh, you, you have to reinsert the needle after palpating the landmarks uh, sometimes you get hematoma uh, especially in um, block interscalene block and uh, supraclavicular block in that case sometimes you have to abandon the block and go for general anesthesia uh, with pns guided block usually we look for the response above the 0 0.3 3 milliamps so suppose in upper limb block you start with 1 milliamp uh, once you get the response you reduce up to 0.5 then you go up to 0 0.4 and 0 0.3 if you are getting the response up to 0 0.4 or 0 0.35 then it's okay you inject the drug but if you are getting the response below 0 0.3 milliamps in such cases uh, there are chances that you are either intranural neural or intrafascicular in that case you have to uh, uh, withdraw the needle because uh, in such cases there are chances of uh, no injury and uh, no damage uh, so, uh, if you are getting the response below 0.3 milliamps, then we have to withdraw the needle and again look for the response above 0.3 milliamps. Uh, same way, if you are uh, uh, patient is complaints of paresthesia while injecting, withdraw the needle and readjust it. Pechi block. Sometimes, as I said, uh, you have given the block. Uh, suppose with supraclavicular block, you got the medial uh, cord response, and uh, if you injected the drug. You will not find good uh, block and there will be patchy block uh, but uh, in certain cases you have to look at the dermatome osteotome and uh, myotomes also suppose uh, you, you are going for shoulder surgery this area is supplied by supraclavicular nerve and it is the part it is part of cervical superficial cervical plexus block rather than decal so even with decal plexus block uh, this area will be spared so you have to inject some uh, amount at the posterior border of sternocleidomastoid to block the superficial cervical plexus and to complete your block. Again, suppose you look at here, this is supplied by T2, intercostal brachial nerve. It is medial part of the axilla. And uh, so if incision is somewhere here, then this is spared. 
in the, in that case you have to do some local filter, infiltration in the axillary uh, crease and it will block the t2 so these parts are spared if you know the perfect anatomy perfect nerve supply perfect dermatomes osteotomes and myotomes then only you will find what is the reason and you can rectify the reason same way this is supplied by a lateral anterior cutaneous branch which is branch of musculocutaneous nerve so if you are given axillary block and if you won't find proper musculocutaneous nerve response and block injection then this area will be spared so some in local infiltration over here on the lateral part of the forearm will cover this thing because this is a cutaneous innervation only so by that you will complete your block uh, you uh, sometimes patients are apprehensive you require some sedation it is not failure of block but it is patient's apprehension so you have to give some uh, sedation same way here you can see the muscle supply uh, muscle supplied uh, by various nerves and according to the incision you have to look for the uh, block same way in the osteotum the suppose the, this is the anterior part which is supplied by median now posterior supplied by the uh, radial now so when it, you are doing radio uh, radius ulna surgery you need to block both median and ulna now for osteotum so you have to decide the block according to the um, uh, myotome dermatome and osteotome so if you don't know the uh, exact anatomy then there are chances of failure uh, again, this is the chart which shows the uh, both uh, uh, all three uh, uh, that is uh, uh, osteotome, myotome, and dermatome for upper limb. So you can keep this inside your OT and uh, you can uh, utilize it whenever it is required. Uh, I will not go into detail of ultrasound guided block because it is again a uh, different lecture. Uh, uh, but uh, I will cover certain points like uh, if you can't visualize the structure or can't visualize the needle. This is the most common problems while doing uh, ultrasound guided block. So when you can't uh, see the desired structure, apply part that is pressure, alignment, rotation and tilt. So suppose if you are giving a uh, tap block in an obese patient and then uh, when you put a, a linear probe, you cannot see the three muscle layer. Then if you apply some pressure, then you can easily see all three uh, muscles uh, and you can inject the drug same way you have to align the probe sometimes to visualize the needle sometimes when you want to see the uh, now in the long axis you have to rotate the probe and tilting is very important in the nose like femoral now median now uh, uh, where you will find at certain angle you can't so see anything and when while doing some tilting when it goes uh, at the right angle of the now you can see the entire needle, a very hyperechoic needle, and now, which is very nicely visible yes, uh, in between the surround and muscle. So that is called anisotrophy. So tilting is also very important. Visualization of the needle, uh, there are many points, uh, but important point is needle, angle of the needle. Uh, so, suppose this, uh, if needle uh, angle is like this, it is difficult to visualize the needle because uh, ultrasound beam get deflected away. But as you keep the needle parallel to the uh, probe, uh, you can easily visualize it. Uh, you can sometimes do healing when you are. What is healing when you are? So when, you, uh, when your needle is like this and probe is like this, ultrasound beam is going away from the probe. It is not going back to the ultrasound probe. So you cannot visualize the needle. So when you press the probe, uh, like uh, pressing the hill, uh, what happens is uh, ultrasound beam will go back to the probe and you can visualize the needle. So you have to make the probe parallel to the needle to visualize it uh, in a bent, better way. Uh, for detail, you can visual, uh, you can watch this uh, uh, lecture on my YouTube channel that is Basics of Ultrasound for uh, you know, ultrasound guided blocks. So if you know the basic things, you can uh, easily uh, understand what to do when you cannot see the st uh, structure or when you cannot see the needle tip. 
this is my YouTube channel where I have more than 155 videos. I think now it is 160 videos, and you will find many presentations and many no block video. Uh, you can watch it, and uh, if you like it, uh, you can subscribe it so that uh, when I, whenever I upload a video, you will get a notification. And this is my website that is NSHR Learning where I uploaded some common topics uh, in an easier manner. So this is all about uh, ultrasound guided uh, uh, and PNS guided upper limb blocks troubleshooting. Thank you. I hope you like the video. I request all the senior members of uh, TAS uh, to upload uh, their pre presentation uh, uh, to the uh, uh, Facebook group, the NSATIS or TAS, uh, the NSATIS Society or TAS, uh, so that everyone can uh, get benefited. Thank you. Thank you very much.